uh, have you seen the the Zoom calls? Can we play? Listen to this Zoom call. This is from the what is it? The Sunrise Foundation, Black Lives Matter, and uh, shut down DC. They had a Zoom call, and on this call were people from the government. They were in positions in the government, and they were being asked, "What levers do you have?" to be able to shut things down. I want you to listen to what they are plotting. Here it is. So we began to put together a list of things we want to know about in the city. So where are all the police stations? Because it's good to know where the police are. Where are all the key government buildings? Where are all the media outlets? Who are the Trump boosters? So we're talking about what would it take to surround the White House and have people do stuff. We can divide it up easily with affinity groups. We have to be willing to put our bodies on the line and take on some discomfort, sacrifice, risk in order to change things. And I've been in conversations where people have never thought about having a gun or like, should I have a gun? But I think we have Hmm. to know, and I'm going to talk a little bit in a few minutes about what do we do when guns are in the mix? So again, chaos is a soup by which change emerges. Let's get cooking. Again, we didn't cause the war. We didn't ask for this war. Many of us are here because we want to fight it. We want more. something different. What are we willing to do? Mm. Right? Because again, we're not dealing with people with just simple guns. We're dealing with people with AR, you know, AK-47s, multiple rounds, a lot of shootings. So um, yeah, we are going to be in a crisis, yes. but we want it to be one that we are creating. We want to make sure that we are on the offense and not the defense. We want them to be responding to us and us not responding to them. In a situation of a coup or an insurrection or an uprising, whoever's got the guns often can win. We should be clear. Huh. Like, this is. It's got to go. Trump's got to go. In order to achieve what they did, they knew they had to take over important government buildings. They knew they had to try and win over members of the police and army, and they had to protect each other. I think we don't have a lot of experience taking over government buildings. And we might need to think about that. And I know, as I, you know, I said earlier how, you know, we may find ourselves in the streets with people with different tactics than ours. But like, there may be some people that are willing to break the windows to get into the government buildings. Like, if that's what we need to do, then we shouldn't fight about that. Let's do that. For an accurate read on the political pulse in America, Don't check the ballot boxes. Count the ammunition boxes. Ahead of the U.S. election, Americans are buying guns in unprecedented numbers. In expectation among some sectors of the population of massive civil unrest once the result is known. Uh, You had the rioters in the streets, but you also had the police standing down. And when a group of police officers are ordered to not intervene, in the damage and destruction of honest citizens' properties. Honest citizens will intervene next time. While no central figures exist, the FBI says they processed close to 30 million firearms background checks this year to date, each one done when a gun is sold. Private firms estimate that the real number might be closer to 17 million. Those numbers still eclipse all previous years. And the year is not over yet. Uncertainty over the coronavirus pandemic created a run on guns. More than four months of rioting and racial unrest spiked those sales to a fever pitch. Because of everything that's happened this year so far, whether it's, again, the pandemic itself, whether it's racist violence, which is a long-standing pandemic, whether it's unease about the election, um, I think, again, that those things are causes for spikes. Across the United States, some Americans are preparing for violence in the aftermath of what many expect to be a highly charged election in a year that already has seen politically motivated murders. You know, it's your right, it's your duty as a uh, citizen of the United States of America to be able, you know, one, to defend your person and your property, but also to work with other like-minded people to protect your country, you know. Militias on both the left and the right have declared their intention to take to the streets if they feel their candidate has been cheated. Nor are the new gun sales relegated to the usual demographics. Gun stores report that African-American women and Democrats make up the bulk of first-time buyers. 
But the tense climate is a nightmare for law enforcement trying to weed out legitimate threats from rising political tempers. We live in a time where people are radicalized to violence, not only to the actually committing acts of violence, but move from a relatively normal state of mind to a radicalized ideology very quickly. And so that creates a lot of challenges for law enforcement. Storekeepers are already preparing in the expectation of post-election riots, but the potential for armed bloodshed has never been higher. What, these are the three groups out of the 200 that the Democrats have partnered with to create chaos. We showed you all of the documentation. Um, the 200 groups, I think that came out in uh, maybe the New York Times, maybe, about a week ago, about how these 200 groups are putting on, have been put on standby. Again, this is leaked a leaked Zoom call between the leadership from Shutdown DC, the Sunrise Movement, and BLM. And they're worried about the right creating violence. This is what we're up against. And this is part of the deep state and part now of your Democratic uh, or Democrat uh, Party. This is part of it now. You are not dealing with your grandfather, your father, or even Barack Obama's uh, Democrats. It is now a Marxist revolutionary group.